Hello, so we've been through the grid interface, we've been through the ladder interface and the market navigator and all the various bits and bobs. Uh, so I've decided to do a separate video for this one on the graphs and charts. Reason being, graphs and charts, there's quite a few different ones. Um, each one's got their own settings, so I didn't want to sort of muddle up the, the ladder interface video with the graphs and charts. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up a, a horse racing market in a in a little while so we, what we do so we've got about 25 minutes to this one so it should be long enough to explain the different graphs um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize the ladder interface there just so it doesn't uh, distract you from what we're talking about <clears throat> I'm going to open up the market overview first off so I'm right clicking on the market navigator bar market overview is down the bottom there so this is how I've got mine set up um, market overview basically just gives you all the different prices in relation to each other um, which sometimes can form patterns and be helpful when you're trying to make a decision trading top we've got the type, the name of the race type of the race money matched as you'd normally have in the market uh, the ladder header bar as well so down the bottom you've got all the different names of different runners and the colors that are uh, linked with them runners so you can see here sequinted is the the favorite just below 2.36 Whereas you've got sort of the third favourite up here, just below 9.6 as well, which is Lunar Spirit. And what that's doing is that's just plotting them against each other. Over time, as it passes by, you can see it jolting along um, just to see the different relationships for them. So it's important to understand that you need to set your graphs for what you're doing, or you need to set any profile for what you're doing, really. So for me, as a pre race trader, I'm only really interested in the last sort of 10 minutes of the racing and probably even the last five minutes of, of what's actually happened at that point in time so if I right click on the actual graph itself uh, it gives you some different options which you'll see with all the different graphs just a few different bits and bobs so the legend is obviously the bit down the bottom with the different names and the colors um, and you can choose whether it's at the bottom the top left or right or off sorting much like the prices before sort of ascending or descending in price font size usual kind of stuff colors text color whatever you want uh, chart range so this is quite an important one this is all in seconds on the chart range so I've got one set to 300 seconds which is five minutes so I mean I might only be trading the last 10 minutes of a race but to be honest with the prices in relation to each other I only really want to see the last five minutes so that's why I've got the set to that one um, and the other important part of it as well is the sample rate so it's updating over five minutes but it's actually updating at a sample rate of 0.25 seconds uh, so every 0.25 seconds uh, a little piece of information is added to the chart so that's how quick it's streaming you can have it a little bit quicker um, I just haven't got it at 0.1 just because I didn't want it sucking up to um, too much of my computer's power as it were um, and obviously anything over sort of 0.3, 0.5 you could argue you want it to be a bit quicker so that's why I've got it set over 5 minutes at 0.25 seconds um, refresh rate I've got the auto shrink on there as well just so that all, all the uh, the whole chart is actually taken up by all the different lines in relation to each other colour scheme you can change them um, I think it's on night actually the one I've got here so you can just, just change the different colours and stuff like that to be honest uh, I think it's night I've got yeah so so that's the chart there um, obviously down the left here you've got the different prices um, and so you can see where they sit in relation to each other if you go further down you've got horizontal grid which again you can choose a colour you can make the lines how many lines you want um, as little or as many so it's always just just a little bit clearer with uh, with a few more lines on there so also I've got mine set to uh, 20 I think which is the maximum uh, further still we've got show at the top okay so you can show the top two three four or all the selections whatever to be honest a lot of this is going to come down to how much screen space you've got I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of different screens um, and a lot of stuff to play about with doing it full time so um, I can afford to have a lot on there but <clears throat> you might only want the top sort of five selections in which case you can see it's crammed in the downside to that is if if there is a specific um, runner that's coming massively in price from say 100 to 1 and it's gone all the way into to 50 to 1 there's a chance that that might well have a, an impression on the rest of the odds in the market so if you haven't got that on there then you're at a little bit of a disadvantage so I'd advise having as many as you can really um, but if especially if you've got a race where there's like 50 well say 50 <laughs> there's never going to be that much but if there's a race where there's like 20 runners or something like that then it can get a little bit confusing so you might not need all of them 
Um, so that that's sort of the, the menus there, which is pretty simple, really. Obviously, showing tar bar at the bottom. Market overview tends to be one of my favourite charts. It's quite useful when it, when it's all the action hots up and and there's a lot of activity in the market. Um, it can be really quite helpful. So that's the market overview covered. <coughs> Um, further on to that you'll have seen when we open up the ladder interface as I said before and it was the same on the grid you've got a little number one and two these little pictures of graphs um, now what that is is if you want to if you click on one of them it'll actually open up a graph which I've got on the other screen let's pull that over um, so you can see that's over well, let's pin it to the top um, you can see that's for sequented that runner um, just because I clicked on that one now that will depend on whether you've got it set as well um, in the market navigator to let's have a little option that came down very early on we, we breezed over um, you've got multi selection in ladder so that basically means if I click on the one on this one and the one on that one and the one on that one I'll, I'll have three different graphs um, all next to each other in fact I can show you so I've clicked on that one there in the second look so you can have them against each other but we're getting into the the whole bit of how much screen space you've got again as well so what you can do if you go down here in the streaming chart options and go current selection um, that graph will change depending on which one my cursor is over. So you can see it's over Lunar Spirit. As soon as it goes over Testing, the graph changes. As soon as it goes over to Sequentia, the graph changes again. So that's what that is um, on the Market Navigator down the bottom there with the Streaming Chart options. So I'll put that back to, to Multi Selection Ladder um, so I can have a couple. Um, <coughs> and then basically the second one is you can have two graphs per, um, per selection. So you could have, for example, you could have, uh, oh, we got here, this is. I haven't used this profile for a while. We've got um, a candlestick chart uh, for sequented, and also we've got like a moving averages one here as well. We can we can change that. So we've got so like the, that might be one you're more familiar with the Betfair graph there. So let's just keep it to one for the moment, um, and we'll we'll breeze through the different types of graphs. Um, obviously, you can have a couple of each, and also they don't have to be uh, separate and, and sort of floating as it were around the screen like this. You